Hello and welcome to the Inflection webinar on migrating to the MicroFocus suite, from the MicroFocus suite to Inflection products. My name's Adam Salmon and I'll be the presenter today. And you can see me, hello, I'm working from home. So if there are any crazy noises, um, it's just part of, the, part of the situation right now. So I hope everyone is safe and well and uh, not going too stir crazy on this Friday. And if you are interested, we have a webinar this afternoon. There's a little more fun called Tipsy Testing. Feel free to join us at Tipsy Testing and uh, share stories and ask questions about testing, ALM and uh, DevOps and other good, good fun questions. So we're gonna get going. This meeting is being recorded. So if your colleagues couldn't attend today or if there's anything you missed that you want to go back over, feel free to um, you know, watch the recording. It'll be on our YouTube channel. Okay. So, and you can see me, but I can't see you. So first of all, for today's meeting, let's go into the agenda. Uh, the first thing is we have people on the on the phone today who uh, may know of us already, uh, so welcome back. And for those of us who have not heard of Inflectra, I've got a few slides here that introduce uh, Inflectra and our other and our products, Spira Team and Rupees, primarily today. Uh, then we're going to do a demonstration of Spira Team, which is our um, ALM solution, which is a replacement for uh, microfocuses. Colley Center, Test Director, ALM, HP, Mercury, uh, various different names you may know it by. Um, but I'm doing a live demonstration of Spira Team for you. Um, then I'm going to show you a brief introduction of how you can do automated testing with our Rapease test automation tool. Rapease is a replacement for Microfocus or make HP or Mercury, uh, UFT, Quick Test Pro, Extra Quick Test. Again, known by different names, but uh, Rapease uh, can replace UFT. Uh, for a variety of different types of testing projects, including desktop applications, web, mobile, um, APIs, and also some specific ERP applications like SAP and Dynamics. Now, in today's demonstration uh, and webinar, I can only touch the surface of Rapease because it's a complicated product. There's lots of functionality. We do have lots of other webinars coming up from my colleagues, Dennis Alexi, in the next few weeks. Uh, again, that will, they'll do a deep dive on different technologies in Rapease. Also, even with Spira Team, in today's session, I'm going to be covering quite a lot of ground. I won't be able to go as in-depth with Spira Team as potentially on some uh, dedicated demos. So my colleague Sriram is also doing a series of webinars in the next few weeks and months on different aspects of Spira Team and Spira Plan. So again, feel free to go to those webinars to get more of an in-depth knowledge. Today is really just scratching the surface of our products and explaining uh, the migration path uh, from the MicroFocus products to um, our products. And yeah, we have a Q&A. So if you have any questions, uh, do feel free to write them in the question window uh, that's running in GoToWebinar. I'm not going to be reading them out till the end of the presentation, so uh, just hold your thunder. But if there is something during the presentation that you want to ask more about or get questions on, please jot them down, and I will get to them uh, in the Q&A session. So first of all, for those who are new to Inflectra, who are we? Well, by the numbers, this is us. We've been founded in 2006 uh, to make software creation easier. That was our goal. Uh, currently, we have about 80,000 users in about 5,000 companies worldwide. Uh, and a key, key differentiator for us is that we focus on you, our customers. Hopefully, you will be one day if you're not already. Uh, not pleasing our investors. We are a private company. We've not taken any uh, venture capital. So we're able to build features that we feel our users will need, not just ones that uh, People like Gartner say we should have because that's what's hit, that's trendy right now. So we focus on the need, the needs of our real customers and our real, their real needs, not necessarily trendy features that just you know make the news. Uh, we have 11 global sales offices. Most of our businesses in North America and in Europe. We do have also uh, sales offices around the world in Asia, Australia, Africa, South America as well. Uh, we do release frequent versions of our software, so all the software you're going to see is current. We release new versions roughly every six weeks, uh, sometimes more frequently depending on the needs and what, what's going on in our pipeline. But we do use Agile methodologies, so we are able to get out new versions relatively quickly and adapt to feedback from our users. And also, we do localize our data, so if you're a customer in Europe and you need to uh, follow GDPR, not a problem. We have data hosting in Europe, we have data hosting in North America, uh, both US and Canada, so customers that need data hosting in Canada uh, can, uh, can definitely have the data localized in their region. Same thing in Asia Pacific. Quite a few of our, of our Australian customers are in life sciences and healthcare. They have to have data held locally in the, in the country. So we can do that. And if it's any of a region that we don't have, we can add it relatively easily as we are using Amazon Web Services for all of our hosting. So that way we can easily spin up new regions as customer demand needs it. 
Um, here are some of our customers. Uh, these are, again, picked by industry. Um, we could do it by geography as well to get a slightly different flavor. Um, we cover pretty much all industries, but you will see a preponderance of, of customers that have very complex needs around traceability or needs around uh, compliance and, and being able to do electronic signatures, sign off, heavy emphasis on quality and compliance. So our customers do run across open industries, but they turn to Inflectra when they need us to solve the tough challenges for them, uh, where maybe traditional task management and bug tracking tools uh, don't necessarily suffice. Um, so how are we different? Apart from the uh, things I mentioned already, our key differentiator we believe is in the concept of harmony. And harmony for us is uh, both the way we think of how we do everything, but also it describes our business strategy as well. And uh, there are three ways for us that we, we feel like we embody and, in, and enable harmony. Uh, the first one is across the different disciplines. And that means that we look at a team that's delivering software, an agile team, for example. We look at them across the different disciplines and make sure that we're getting functionality and features that enable the entire team. Um, there are definitely products out there that really focus on, say, developers, making developers efficient. Uh, those products may not be necessarily loved or liked by testers or by the managers. You can get a tool that managers will love with amazing reporting, but if the users hate using it, the data is going to be out of date and the manager won't get them the metrics they need. And similarly, uh, the developers you know, need tools that make them productive that aren't just you know, getting data to the testers or the managers. So we look at the testers, developers, and managers as, as the three key constituents. And there are others too, like business analysts, who often feel sidelined and in you know, IT people and support. And we bring them together. So whenever we build functionality and, and features, we're looking at those different disciplines to make sure that we can hit all of them with the new versions. The other thing that's really important is the ability of simplicity. And simplicity is not necessarily making things simple, but making things simple for you. So what that means is that we're going to actually build functionality so that you don't have to integrate other tools. So rather than having to have a base product with 20 different plugins, uh, the base product is designed to give you everything you need from day one. You can turn it on, start using it, and be productive and spend more time using our tools and less time building a framework if it's automation or configuring 10 plugins if it's a you know LM solution as well. So that's one of the key differentiators. Thinking ahead a little bit about what you need and building that functionality in with features that you can turn on or off and customize. But the idea is you don't have to customize and configure it from day one just to be productive. And then the third thing is ecosystems. Um, we have customers in every industry, every part of the, every part of the world. Uh, we also have customers using a whole bunch of different tools, uh, not always the same tools, not even the same tools in the, in the same company. You know, we'll have customers that have, for example, Atlassian, Jira, GitLab, Microsoft TFS or DevOps, Redmine, Bugzilla, all in one company on different teams, and they need them all to work together. So Spira team and uh, Rapiz are designed to work with different CI tools, different bug tracking tools, different project management tools, different source code, um, subversion, so Git, you name it. Whatever you're using, we either have a plugin for it today, we have an SDK for you to build the plugin, or if you let us know, it can become part of our roadmap. Um, already in the pipeline, uh, we're working on a plugin for Asana because some customers have needed that. And things like Salesforce uh, are on the roadmap for this year. Last year, we did things like ServiceNow and GitLab. So every year, there's new tools coming on stream that we need to integrate with, and we're ahead of you on that. So now to the focus of today's presentation is really on moving from micro focus. And obviously, in the current environment where the economy has dipped a bit, people are looking to cut costs, looking for more efficient platforms, things that can save money and save time. And so we believe that the Inflectra suite, uh, together with our partner Neotis, who provides the load testing portion of our platform, um, gives you that. So you can move from uh, my ALM to my to Spira team, you can move from UFT to Rapiz, and you can move from Load Runner to Neoload. And those three work together seamlessly to give you an integrated experience. Now, for today's demo, I'll be focusing mainly on Spira team and Rapiz. If you're interested in Neoload, um, do let me know. We can definitely put you in touch with our partner, Neotis, so you can do demos. And they're doing uh, monthly webinars as well. So we can send you information on how to get more information on Neoload specifically. Uh, load testing is a, a specialist area, and they do a really good job of being able to cover web, SAP, uh, desktop apps, mobile apps, uh, web apps. Again, a very comprehensive solution. And we do integrate both Spira Team and Rapiz with Neoload. So you can run load testing scenarios from Spira Team. You can also convert your Rapiz automation scripts into load scripts. And you can even do a combination of Rapiz UI tests and load tests at the same time to monitor things like uh, user interface uh, responsiveness and experience. So that's how it all fits together. 
Spiro test and Spiro team give you a test management. Neo load from Neo test gives you performance testing, and Rapides gives you the functional testing. So first of all, let's look at um, Spira Team. And Spira Team, which is also part of our Spira Plan solution, so I'm going to be demoing Spira Team today, but if you need a more enterprise solution that gives you portfolio management, risk management, um, then you can always upgrade Spira Team to Plan. But the tool that probably is most comparable to ALM is Spira Team, so that's why we chose that for today's demo. That's more apples to apples. Um, Spira Team is basically a requirements and test management tool. We're going to see it in detail uh, in the live demo just coming up. Um, but as well as having all the functionality that's in ALM in terms of requirements management, test management, bug tracking. It also has a lot of the features that are in the quote new ALM Octane, like Agile planning boards, things that were basically in HP Agile Manager. And um, we've already merged them into one platform. So you don't have to have two different tools. We actually have one solution that can do everything from the requirements, test, and defect management side from your traditional ALM to the, the Scrum boards, the Kanban boards, the task management, the source code integration, all the stuff that's in the Octane sort of new platform, we have it all together ready to go. And I think we're the only tool that really does that well. Um, so the main benefits of Spira Team over, over MicroFocus as ALM in this, in this particular case is that, first of all, um, it's a modern user interface. We're not using ActiveX. We're not using legacy technologies. Um, so therefore, it runs in every browser. Uh, you don't need a special you know, IE modified browser running in Sandbox. It runs on a Macintosh. We have you know, people who are looking at um, Spira Team right now who are currently using ALM on their Mac using uh, Parallels or Virtual PC. Well, that goes away now. You can just simply use it in Safari. Well, that's much easier. Uh, it's also much easier to get up and running than ALM. There's no dedicated admin needing. Many of our clients uh, use Spira Team and they run it uh, with, a, with you know, hundreds and hundreds of users with one or less, maybe half, a dedicated admin. And small teams have no dedicated admin. They just use have someone do it as part of their job. So you don't need an, a Spira Team admin typically. Typically, it's just a small part of someone's job, which makes it much easier and cheaper. Um, the other thing that's really great is it's also got the Agile planning features you need right out of the box. You don't have to tie together, you know, Jira plus ALM plus Quality Center, you know, all mixed together. It can give you that out of the box, but also it does integrate with Jira or TFS if you need. The other thing that's good in Spira Team is the fact that we've designed it to be cross-project from day one. So we have cross-project reporting, we have program management in the Spira Plan Edition. We also have pro portfolio management as well. So you've got lots of different options for reporting in dashboards across projects, which is not so true for again for the uh, ALM platform for Microfocus. And then the other things that we feel make it a, a great differentiator if you're looking to migrate is you get source code management out of the box. You can integrate your source code tools, no third-party plugins needed. Um, it's also an open platform. If you use um, ALM, you're probably limited primarily to uh, running um, UFT or Load Runner. You can use their, I think it's, I forget what it's called, the execution tool they have that runs third-party tools, but it's much more limited. We've actually built plugins for other tools, including our competitors, because we know that, particularly in automation, not every tool is good at every single um, task or every single platform. And so maybe you are using a competitor, maybe using Test Complete, maybe you're using a Selenium, and that's great because the right tool is appropriate for those projects. So we've built plugins for those and maintain them for you. Um, the other big thing you'll find coming from ALM is that the administration deployment is much easier. No custom VBA scripts, no triggers to write. Everything is done through the administration. All the workflow configuration is done through the UI. It's, a, again, a relatively easy to both set up and to administer. Uh, we have project templates, so you can even share customizations really easily across different projects. Uh, we have built-in workflows, so from day one you can get going, but if you need to configure the workflows, we've got uh, the ability to configure them really easily, but also um, the electronic signature feature that a lot of our clients in life sciences and aviation uh, typically need to be able to do sign-offs, that's built in. It's not a third-party application you've got to turn on or buy or integrate, um, it's a built-in feature. And then lastly, uh, as you, if you look at our roadmap and look at our release notes, we're releasing new versions roughly every six weeks. So it's a continually improved product. Uh, it's not something that was bought by another, from another company and being slowly shelved. It is in active development. And then lastly, and probably the reason why you know, people are looking at this right now, is that um, Spire is significantly less expensive than ALM. And if you're using the, the SaaS version of ALM in particular, you can switch right now and save costs immediately. If you're on the on-premise version of ALM, you can wait to, you know, when your license renewal comes around, definitely think about Spire Team. It will save a lot of money, and we've got a really easy migration path. So we'll come back to migration in just a second. Before I do that, let's go into the automation tool we'll be looking at today, and that is Rapease. 
Rapiz is our test automation tool. Uh, it's an object-based tool. It's a scriptless tool. It has built-in AI insights to help it do um, self-healing, which is when it's able to uh, find a test that's become broken because the app changed and intelligently adapt to your application um, to avoid false positives or false negatives. So that's something we have and it can handle web, mobile, desktop, APIs, and we have pre-built accelerators for some of the most common solutions like Microsoft Dynamics, uh, SAP, and Salesforce. I'll be showing you these applications, so don't worry that it's just PowerPoint. Uh, the five benefits of Rapiz over UFT, there's actually, I think, a, web, a white paper on our website with more than this, with about 10 benefits. I picked the top five for today. Um, the first thing is the superior object identification. We've got some AI self-healing based, based in now. So instead of it having to be an exact match, it can do an approximate match based on historical data it's seen. The second thing is it's scriptless first. So you write your test scripts using our Rapiz visual language or RVL. And then if you want to, you can always convert that dynamically into uh, our JavaScript language. So that way, if you want to do some more advanced automation, you can do that with script but it is scriptless first. So again, designed for functional users, maybe your SAP analysts, your accountants, people who aren't automation engineers by trade, but know the application better, they can do a lot of the automation themselves, and then the automation experts, engineers, can come in and do the more advanced stuff when it's needed. Uh, there's no plugins needed for different technologies. There is one version of Rapiz only, and it does web, mobile, desktop, um, SAP, Dynamics, Salesforce, uh, mainframe, all of those, in one platform. There's not 10 different versions you've got to buy. Uh, and then, of course, we do use JavaScript, which is one of the most popular languages, along probably with Python these days, uh, instead of VBA slash VB script, which uh, is a bit of a relic. And the last thing is we've already made um, Rapiz DevOps ready. So you can use uh, Rapiz with a lot of different D uh, CI pipelines. It works with any pipeline because it's got a command line interface and it can run headless um, using Node. But we've got some pre built packages for. Um, uh, Microsoft Azure DevOps and Jenkins. So those are the two we've got pre-built packages, but you can use it with any CI pipeline. And then lastly, Rapiz is also priced to be competitive with UFT. So if you are looking to uh, move off UFT, there is a financial benefit as well. And also we do uh, bulk uh, package Spira team with Rapiz. So if you want to get both tools at once, there's a further saving, which is you know, good right now. So migration is obviously the key thing because it, obviously having a good tool is nice, but you have to get your data from your existing tool. So how do you do that? So for Microfocus ALM, it's a very straightforward. There's a, an application you can see on the left here, and it basically connects to ALM through its API, and it basically re-extracts the entire project and all of its artifacts into Spira Team. And you can see that right here in the bottom right and the data is transferred seamlessly over. And then we do uh, transfer across requirements and releases and the relationships. We also do um, copy across the test cases and the test sets and the test runs. So not only the current state of the test cases, but all the historical executions are carried over as well. We copy across the users and the defects. And not only do we copy each of these types of data across, we do copy across the uh, relationships and the traceability between them. That's really important. We do have the option also to bring across the attachments. That does obviously take a bit more time, so it's an option you can turn on or off. Similarly, you can turn on or off the other features too. Maybe your requirements are all junk and you don't need those, so therefore maybe you want to just bring over the test cases, or you can bring over everything. It's really up to you. Uh, and when it comes over to Spira team, all the data is going to be maintained in the same way. Um, some of the terms are a little bit different, and when we go through the demo with Spira Team, I will try and use some of the ALM terms and Spira Team terms just to give you some familiarity, but the data is, is going to be maintained across, and the functionality is the same. Uh, moving from UFT is a little bit trickier because it's obviously a, a script-based tool, and so that's obviously something where it's not quite so click and point, but we do have a proven framework for migration. And this is something we did last year because we had some clients that were looking to move from UFT to Rapiz, and they had large, large, large investments in UFT. They had many, many pages and pages and megabytes of uh, VBA scripts. They had object repositories. They had keyword-driven tests. They had a lot of investment in UFT, and so they were looking to how can they streamline that. So we do actually have a framework for migrating. Uh, it migrates across a lot of the different pieces of data in different ways. Uh, on the screen here, you can see some of the ways. This white paper that you can see on the bottom here and the links in the, in the presentation, 
Um, that gives you the link to the white paper on our website that really explains in detail. But in a nutshell, what it does is it reads the object repository from UFT and it migrates that into the Rapiz object repository. So the objects that you see here top right get migrated to these ones you see bottom right. Um, also, all of the, the data, the test data that they, they store in a UFT gets migrated across into the equivalent uh, spreadsheet type objects within Rapiz. And then lastly, it's not shown here, but we also move across all the VBA script and particularly the code that accesses the objects. We dynamically translate that into JavaScript. And that actually does work. It's pretty amazing. Uh, we're able to convert the uh, a VBA to JavaScript and uh, well, we add comments to what we've done. So that way, if there's anything that we've migrated across that maybe you want to change, there's comments explaining what it did. So whereas the ALM migration is truly a 100% migration, all data is migrated. It really is click and point. The migration from, from UFT to Rapiz is more of a 90% solution. It gets you there. You then have to do some refactoring after the fact. But again, if you've got you know, years of investment in UFT, getting you 90% of the way is a huge time saver. And so what we'd recommend is you try it with some of your smaller scripts, and then one of our automation experts can work with you to verify what, what was migrated and, and help you with that last 10%. So it's definitely a managed solution. We have experts who can you know, help you do this. You're not on your own. So that's the PowerPoint. That's really about, first of all, just to recap before we get into live application. Um, there are many different features that make uh, Spire Team a better tool uh, than ALM, both in, in terms of being modern and better functionality. And also that using Rapiz and Neoload with Spire Team gets you the same integrated solution that you may have had with UFT and LoadRunner. But unlike with those tools, it's not a locked in solution. You can integrate other tools as well. And the last thing is, it's really easy to migrate from uh, ALM to uh, Spyro team, and it's pretty easy to move from uh, UFT to Rapiz. Um, we definitely have people who can help you do that as well, uh, both in Fletcher personnel and some of our partners. I think some are actually on the web the webcam today on the webinar. So uh, we have lots of different partners. Um, I'm going to shout out to Covera, who I think are on the, the web, webinar today, um, and NV, NVP from uh, Canada. So um, we have partners who can help you do these migrations. You're not on your own. So, moving now into the live application, always the fun part. And as I always say in these webinars, if anything's going to go wrong, it will go wrong in a demo. So, this is um, Spyro Team. Uh, this is the latest version of it, version 6.4. Uh, version 6.5 is coming out in about a month and a bit. So, uh, you'll see some new functionality around uh, program level and, and the portfolio level um, dashboards as well. But uh, everything you see today is currently live. So, if you want to sign up for a trial, you'll get the exact same feature set you're seeing. So first thing, uh, if you're not familiar with the tool, Spyro Team uh, is organized in a similarish way to ALM in a sense that you have, if you go to the main navigation bar here, this is your workspace selector, and that lets you choose um, the project you're in, or we sometimes call them projects or products, and in ALM they're called projects, so I may use the word project today, and then we can roll them up into what we call programs and in ALM those are typically called domains so if you're used to ALM you'll be used to domains and projects in Inspire Team you'll have programs and products and the products and the programs both have dashboards and they have functionality around them as well another feature that we have that may be a little bit different is we have this my page and that's where I've come in today and the my page lets you uh, see everything that you have to do so what does that mean? Well, if I'm a tester coming in or a developer coming in, I don't necessarily want to have to go hunt down a report to find what do I have to work on. It's nice if I could come to one place and see everything. So here you can see on the My page, you can see everything that relates to me, me as the user. So here's my save searches. These are my favorites. I can also see these favorites inside the application further down. I have not been assigned any requirements today because I'm a tester, so I don't have to worry about those today, but if they were, they will be assigned. I've got two test sets to run. So these are the two test sets that my test manager has given to me. And if I wanted to run them right now, I could hit the play button. So it's, again, it's right here in front of me. Uh, also, I've been assigned a, a defect to fix because I'm maybe a developer as well, or at least part-time developer. Uh, also, I found a bunch of bugs during my testing, and I can see these are right here. So I know that the developers are working on them, hopefully. Maybe not. And also, I can see my pending test runs that I've had a whole bunch of tests I've started that I haven't finished. And that maybe I'm just you know, not, not, a, not a finisher. I'm uh, someone who doesn't finish things. Maybe it's because it's a demo machine and the demos don't usually go all the way through. So it could be that too. But either way, as a tester, you can come in here and you can see everything that you have to resume. So this dashboard is a nice way to find everything that you have to work on and get going right away. Um, so let's go into the dashboards. So at the product level, we have a built-in dashboard, which lets you see 
all the key information for your project or product. So here, for example, is the dashboard for my library information system product. These are all the different widgets we have. These are all built in. You can customize them, add different ones and move them around. Uh, there's also dashboards for development in general. Uh, that development is more of a DevOps view. Uh, testing is the one that's really more for the test manager. Uh, since we're coming from an ALM background in this presentation, I'm going to focus more on the QA side of things, but there are the other views as well. So you can see your requirements test coverage in the graph. How many requirements do I have? Can I test them? Have I tested them? And if I did test them, what happened? Those are the three questions, the answers. Well, have I got test cases? Well, 58% of my requirements have no test cases, so that clearly the answer is not really. Um, have I run them yet? Well, so I have them, most of my tests have been run, so that's not too bad. Of the ones that have been run, we've got more failures and blocks right now, so not so good. So the answer to the questions are, you know, have I got enough test cases? Not really. Have I run them? Mostly. Have I, are, they, are they working? Not so much either. So you get to ask those three questions in one place. And then here in this time phase graph, you can see the progress of what's going on. We're actually seem to be getting better because we've got more passes. We've added some more test cases in total, so the, the total numbers have gone up. And then we've got a bunch more failures coming in. So things have gotten better and they've gotten worse again. So in a real project, that will probably be slightly concerning. Um, you can also see the same data across the different releases. And you can also see things like the defects as well. So these are my defect counts, what's open, what's closed, what's the, what's the distribution of the ones that are open by priority. And of course, if I do switch it to a specific release, the data will change to only include the data for that one release. So it's right here. And if I change releases, I'll do the same thing. You're gonna get a different release right here, yeah, release 1.1. If I choose a release, not only does it include the data from that release, it also includes any of the iterations or sprints or phases. If you're doing um, Agile, you'll have sprints typically, particularly if you're doing Scrum. And then if you're doing a waterfall project, you will have phases like design, develop, test, UAT, system test, integration test. We can support both waterfall and agile and even a hybrid of the two. Um, so that's pretty cool. Now, before we jump out of this dashboard, I just wanna quickly show you the DevOps view because it is interesting. DevOps view lets you see the builds, the source code and things like that as well. So these are my issues, my builds. If there's any, been any commits in this branch that haven't been, they'd be here. You can see burn down graphs, you can see burn up graphs, you can see which tasks are running late. So again, for the development manager, lots of good information around how the development team is doing. And then, of course, the project level is great, but sometimes I want to work at a higher level. The program level, if I go here, lets you look at the program and you can see, you know, across multiple projects, some of these same metrics. Now, in the next version coming out, we've added a whole bunch of new widgets to this dashboard, and we're going to be having a webinar um, you know, in the future on Vision 6.5. You'll get to see some of the new widgets as well. And I think we had a preview webinar about a month ago, so if you are interested in what's in 6.5, feel free to watch that recording on YouTube. It covers some of the new functionality. Uh, but this is the current live version. And this dashboard is available for different programs. So if I switch program, I'll get a different dashboard. So depending on which program I'm looking at, you can see here I've got different views for me as the program manager. Okay, so that's the uh, the project level. Now, let's think about, if you're used to coming from the ALM world, you're probably used to the requirements view. So the requirements view is very similar, at least on the surface. We have the same hierarchical view you'll be familiar with in ALM, where you can see requirements, and we support parent-child, just like they do. We have inline graphs, which is nice. We do have favorites, so you can create uh, favorites based on which requirements you, you're filtering on. I want to find all the ones that are P1 and failed, so... For example, that's a shared filter. There you go. Clear my filter. So you can you can store favorites. You can filter by any of these columns. You can show and hide different columns, and also you can you know, apply a filter to find anything that maybe meets a meets a coverage issue. You can also uh, search by tasks. So from a development standpoint, are all my development tasks done? So there's lots of different filters. Now, in addition to this, which again, you'll be familiar with if you come from ALM, we do have some other views as well, which they don't have. So one thing is, sometimes you want a sortable list. You don't just want a hierarchy, you want to sort the list, you want to filter by just the epics, uh, things that are hard to do in a hierarchy, or you just want to order things around. So we have a, a sortable view as well. So you're not, you're not just constrained to the hierarchy view, you've also got a sortable view, which is nice. Now, we also have a board view, Kanban board view, or scrum board view. So if you want to see your requirements, you can now see them in a board. So you see, here's my requirement number four. It's got three development tasks. They're all done. They're all green. We've got four test cases, though. Test case two is uh, passed. 13 is not run. Eight is blocked. And 38 is failed. And if you click on them, you can see them. If you hover the mouse, you can even see the name. If there is a description, it will pop up. Yeah, like this one here. So you do have a traceability view 
on your board view. And you've got a full uh, Scrum and Kanban board here. You can view it by different views. This is by priority. I can do it by sprint as well if I want. So I've got sprint one, two, and three, and I can now see it. Uh, depending on what you want to see on it, you can have a detail view or a more simple view. Again, okay, depends how much detail, detail you want to see, how big your screen is. Also, we do have a document view. So if you're coming from a more waterfall background and you're used to tools like Doors, uh, some of the Rational Suite particularly, you may be used to a more document-centric view of requirements. Well, these are them here. So you've got your, all your requirements that you saw in your you know, grid view. You've now got them in your board view and in your document view. So let's go ahead and look at some of these. Book management, edition management, you can search by the headings, it just scrolls down, or you can scroll in the browser. We also have the ability to look at use cases, and when you have use cases, we do diagram them. So you can define the steps in the Spira team, and we'll draw a diagram, and if you actually go into the requirement, which we'll open up over here, you'll be able to see this is the requirement, the name of it, the test coverage, and all the rest of it. But then down here, we have the steps. So Again, this is just a different view. And the last view we have, which again, I don't think uh, ALM has, at least it didn't when I looked at it last, is a mind map view. So if you want to see all the requirements graphically, you can see all the requirements. And if you scroll across, you can even see the relationships. Uh, the solid lines are the primary parent child. The dotted lines are the associations, the linkages. And before we, before we exit requirements and keep going onto the uh, QA side of things, let me just show you also what requirements look like. The UI of Spyro Team is, again, a much more modern, clean UI than, the, than the, uh, the LM one, but it does have a lot of the same functionality. You can browse your requirements. You've got your main fields. You've got the, the custom properties that you can define. So things like difficulty, classification, ranking, and decimal, they are all custom fields that we've added, same as review date, same as the, uh, there isn't one if an, you've got a user field as well. We, we did that in test cases. You can see your test coverage which tests are linked to it. Uh, you also can track development tasks and subtasks. So if you wanna know, is the development on track and, you know, for this particular feature, you can track that right here. Uh, we can also send these tasks to tools like TFS as well. Uh, we can also attach documents, and we can attach documents into the system, which is great. But beyond that, we do also have a document management tool, which, which again, is something you won't, we won't have in ALM that we do have. So you can then manage all your documents in a centralized place, and you can then check them in, check them out, and you can do workflow on them, and you can have different versions managed. So if I go in here, there's three different versions of my sequence diagram. Right now, this particular one is locked because it's marked as completed, so I can't actually change it. If I was to re return it to the review state, and hit save, or, or even not save, I can actually now add a new version. So you can upload new versions, manage the different versions, and then once the document is finalized, you can then lock that version and people can only see the latest version. So it gives you great control. All right. So lastly, we do have a history tab on all our artifacts. So like in LM, you can see the change history. And like in LM, we've got the associations tab, which is equivalent to their links and artifact links that they have. So we can link requirements to other requirements, to defects, to source code revisions, if there are any. Let's see if we've got any I can show you today. Yep, here we go. Here's two revisions, revision 12 and revision 3. And that's where we've actually linked to source code commits. Uh, this is an example based on subversion. Could be Git, could be, if anyone's still using it, Mercurial. Uh, we even do CVS, we do TFS, and we can even do source safe. So if you're living in the, in the dark ages, we can even do source safe. So that's what we can do on the requirement side. Uh, some of these features are common throughout Spira Team. So if you're using the history of associations or attachments, you will see that throughout the application. You can also use this toolbar. It's pretty common where you can create new items. You can clone the current item. You can, for the most part, all items will let you export them to different formats, print them out. Some artifacts like requirements and tasks will let you split them. So you can separate them between different releases or sprints. You can email it to someone. You could also subscribe someone to the item, and that way, if the item changes, it's like a follower or a watch. Um, it lets you notify them if they need to you know, monitor what's going on. I think watch is the term that Jira uses. So if you're used to that in Jira, it's the same feature. Great. So that's requirements. Let's uh, jump quickly into planning board. We do have a planning board view. I showed you the specific requirements boards. We do have also a more comprehensive planning board that lets you look at requirements, tasks, defects, test cases, all on one board, and that's really useful if you're especially if you're looking to do, go more agile or do more agile, and you are going to look at something like um, ALM Octane or HP Agile Manager. If you are looking to move to Spyro Team, it's already built in for you. You don't need any separate tools. Uh, we do have a release management functionality. 
the release management's where you're able to con configure all the different versions you're testing. And again, HP, I think, has calls these releases and cycles. So it's very similar. We can tie requ requirements and tests and tasks and defects to the different releases. We build it down with a hierarchy where you can have releases and sub-releases and minor releases. And any level of release can have one level further that could either be sprints, like these three sprints, or they could be uh, phases if it's a waterfall project. Uh, let's see if we've got any phases here. Let me uh, go to level one. I don't think we have any phases. If not, I can just create one for you right now. Oh, there we go, a dev phase. So you can have a dev phase, design phase, UAT, your classic waterfall phases as well. And we do have white papers on our website about how you could use Spyro Team with different methodologies. Okay, so we've kind of gone through the planning side of things. Let's look at test cases. Now the test cases, uh, test case functionality, it lets you uh, manage all your test cases. It's similar to ALM in that you've got different folders. So from a migration standpoint, when we migrate the data into Spyro team, it's gonna look very similar. This is your subject tree. Uh, these are your test cases. I think it's called test lab in, um, in ALM. So you go into a folder, you'll see your test cases. You can sort by any of these fields, you can filter, you can have favorites, just like we saw on requirements. There are some nifty tools where you can you know, add to a release, add to a test set, add them back to a requirement and so on, export things out. You can also view the entire test plan for a specific version. So let's look at what's planned for release one, okay, in this folder. Let's look at what's planned for release 1.1. No, it's a different, actually it's the same test case, but they behave differently. So what will happen is, depending on your test plan or for each release, you may have different test cases or maybe the same test case, but with different results because the same test will behave differently the last time it was run in that unique release. If we click on a specific uh, test case, we could drill down into it. Each test case in Spira has the name, description, we have a rich text editor, which will be again familiar from ALM. And if we do migrate from ALM, we're gonna bring across their descriptions and all the formatting. So that's nice for you. Uh, another feature we do have that uh, one of our prospects mentioned that they've been looking for for many years in ALM is a suspect flag. We have that already. So if you change a requirement and the test case has already been approved, then we will automatically uh, mark it as suspect for you. So you know you have to review it and you can then filter on the suspect test cases. Um, in terms of reviewing test cases, there is a built-in workflow editor, so you can review test cases, approve them, retire them, mark them as obsolete, so there's that whole management. And for our um, life science customers, we do have the ability to do electronic signatures, so when you review a test case and it's been approved, you can mark it with a signature and, and assign a meaning to it. Uh, let's drill that a little bit. Um, all the test cases are here. They have steps. If they're manual, uh, these are akin to the design steps in ALM. And just like ALM, we can have expected result and description. We do also have a sample data field, which they don't have. You can have custom fields in the test steps, and you can have template test cases that we call um, insert link. So let's say I want to reuse a test case in my test case. Uh, or in fact, let's go ahead and create a new one. That's even easier. Let's say we're going to create a new test case that's going to be that we're transferring a book. It's meant to be a library system. So a new test case is you know, ability to transfer book. Okay, hit save. And I want to be able to transfer a book. So let's edit some steps. And the first thing will be, will be click on link to transfer book. And the expected result would be the um, book transfer page appears, save that. And again, uh, we don't need to spend too much time on today's webinar, I've got a lot to go through. So I'm just gonna add a second step, which would be um, enter in source and destination and click transfer. Expected result is the transfer happens. And, you know, it looks like, and I'll just show you a screenshot. I'll go to my sample app, I'll take a screenshot and just paste it in right there. So okay, there was my uh, sample data, great. So the question is, how do I then log in? Because I haven't logged in yet. So I could go to the you know, insert step and say, go to login page, enter login, enter password, but that's very time consuming. And especially if every test case has to log in, that's a pain in the neck. So that's where insert link comes in, because like ALM, we have shared steps. So you get your common tests, you choose your login, general test case, and you can then put in whatever values you want in the parameters that so we'll log in as, you know, librarian, password is the same. We don't need the OS right now, so I'll leave that blank. And then you've added it in a link, and there's your login and password. So exactly like ALM, you can link in other, other test cases as steps. And if you are using our migration tool, then it will also do that for you. It brings across those links, so they're all maintained. 
And that's the basics. If you are using automation, which we're going to get to in the repeats portion, uh, the repeats test script or other automation tools will appear right here. So we are going to come back to that. And there's a whole bunch of functionality around test cases. We can't go through it all today, but you can look at all the defects that were logged against the test case. If I choose one that actually we already have from before, there's my uh, there's my defects. Yep, they're different defects, different different uh, test cases. You can see attachments. You can see which test sets the defect the test cases in, history associations, all very similar as we saw before. We're going to see some of this again when we get into automation. So let's go to test sets. Test sets is where you organize your test cases. This is similar to the test lab in ALM. And again, we do migrate these across from ALM. So we'll bring across your, your folders, your subject tree, and we'll bring across your test sets from ALM. You can have different folders for them. So I've got some functional tests in this folder. I've got some regression tests in this folder. Uh, let's add a new folder just for today. We'll add in a uh, smoke tests folder. And all the ones that are in the root, we want to categorize those. So I'm going to not that one. I want to drag, you know, these four here. And I'm going to put all of these four directly into my spoke test. So you can just drag and drop to move things around pretty easily. And if you go into a test set, test sets do contain the name, and description, and all the rest of it. But then the most important thing is you add your test cases. You can add them multiple times. You can pass through different test parameters either to the individual cases or you can pass through parameters to the whole set. So let's say we wanted to add a value to everyone. Every test case is going to be run using IE. Oops, IE. Um, you put that here. If, for example, you want to log in with one test case specifically with a specific value of, let's say, login, like guest. And the second test case, you have to log in with a different value, let's say um, administrator. Then you can set parameters admin. either at the test set level or test case level. It's up to you, depending on what your needs are. You can even set a value for the whole set and override it for specific cases. And then another feature we do have, which is similar to what ALM will have, it's called test configurations. Let's say you want to run this entire set across a whole bunch of different data grids. Uh, I've got, for example, a list of all my logins, all my passwords, all my browsers. I don't want to have to have 100 test sets. I just want one test set. So I can do that. I can link this test set to my data grid. So like by just choosing it from here and hitting save. And then I go over to my test configuration. And you're going to see here a list of all the test data. And you can build this out inside of Spyro Team. You give it a, a list of individual values like logins and passwords, and it builds the matching set. So if I go to this one, we've got 12 entries. We just gave it a list of logins, a list of browsers, and a list of operating systems. And it made a complete set out of every single one we had. So you can build out the test data really easily. So these 77, 78 entries you have here, that's every login, every browser, and every operating system. I just created three independent lists. And I tell Spire Team to use them, and it then puts them together. And you just do that by going to Populate, pick your values, pick your parameter, put it in together, hit Add, and then build it out. And it populates the whole grid. So that's how you do test configurations. And then, of course, running test cases will result in defects. Um, and that's, a, unfortunately, a, an everyday occurrence. And that will result in defects being logged. So when you run a test case in Spire Team, just like an ALM, we do log defects. They go into the defect tracker. And the great thing is these defects can be synchronized with other tools. So you can be using Spyro Team as your primary testing tool. Your testers will run the test case in Spyro Team, but then they will actually go to push the defects to, say, Jira or to, for example, uh, Microsoft DevOps or GitLab or Redmine. We're adding support for Asana as well for tasks and defects. Um, so whatever tools you're using, you can push those defects to those tools. And it may be, again, different tools on different teams. So if you look at your navigation, you might decide to have Jira on one project, TFS on another project, maybe Spyro Team's own bug track on other projects. You can mix and match. And that's all built in with a tool. It's not some third-party add-on that you have to pay for. So that's pretty much what you get from the ALM migration. We do have other features that are not in ALM, so they won't migrate across because they don't exist, but they are available. So you do have tasks. So if you want to do task management, and you can do task management either in this, this um, grid view. You can do task management in a, in a board view. So you can do your scrum tasks. You can look at all the user stories at a particular release. For example, here's my user stories, and you can look at each of them and see what tasks are currently there. And if you want to see what the progress is, you can hit detail view, and now you get the progress bar. Uh, these are all green, so these are all been done. But if I look at this one here, there's some red, you'll see here, that, oh, I see what's going on. This is a late start. This is a, a late finish. This is a late finish. You see who's involved with it. Fred, Fred, Fred. Oh, I see Fred is the problem. So you can drill down and see exactly you know, who's behind, who you need to help. 
And we do have a source code viewing module, which is also not an ALM. It's a third party plugin for them. So you can go here and link your source code revisions. You've got plugins for Git, Subversion, and various other tools. And you can see all the code and you know, manage revisions and have traceability from requirements to test cases to defects, code, tasks, end to end traceability all in one, in one system. And it's no good. You know, having a great tool if you can't get good reports. I mean, the reporting is the key. We have, a, we have great reporting. We've got dashboards of reports where you can run different graphs and charts. You can write your own custom reports uh, using our SQL engine. Uh, that's beyond the scope of today's webinar, but we do have webinars uh, that cover these. Also, if you are interested in learning more about this, we do have our upcoming conference in October, which will be a combination of virtual and physical. So you can attend either in person, depending on how the conditions are, or 100% you can attend it virtually. And so we're going to be doing sessions on how to write custom reports, custom graphing, a lot of good information. But you can generate any report you need from the system using our SQL engine and our templating engine. Uh, out of the box, though, you've got all these graphs and charts. You can filter it by release or by sprint. Uh, so you can see that, again, all these different graphs will change. You can also um, run a report. So if I wanted a, a requirements traceability report, for example, I can generate that right now in PDF and hit the button. I can filter by all these fields. I'm not going to do that right now. I'll just run it just as is to show you a flavor of what a report would look like. And while that's running, uh, we're going to be moving over to the automated testing portion in a few minutes. Okay, there's our report. Like that. So that's an overview of Spira Team and how it compares to ALM. And I've tried to illustrate what would migrate and what's just new functionality that you wouldn't have in ALM that you'll just get, you know, that you can then use in addition. Um, but now let's talk about the automation side. This is Rupees, our automation tool. It works with Spira Team. It doesn't rely on Spira Team, so you can use it with other tools like uh, Microsoft Azure DevOps instead of, of Spira Team. And it's designed to do uh, UI, primarily UI testing. It does do API testing as well, and uh, it can do SOAP and REST, um, but it's really generally used for UI testing and RPA. There are its two main strengths. The API testing is available when you want to do either API testing as part of an RPA script, because it may be hybrid RPA, hybrid, RPA, hybrid um, API, or maybe it's an automation test where you want to load some data in through an API and then you know, view the data in the UI and test it, or the reverse. Um, it can do standard API testing as well, um, but yeah, generally speaking, there are other tools that do that just as well. So let's go ahead and create a new test. And for today, I'm going to be using that sample um, application library information system that I was using earlier on in Spira Team. And so what I'm doing, I'm creating a new test. Um, it's giving me the option to create it right into Spira Team, so I'll do that because it's a demo today with Spira Team. You can also create locally if you're just using Rupees uh, by itself. So I'll put it into the um, regression test folder because it's an automated regression test. Create a new test case. That creates the test case directly in Spira Team for me. So we'll call it a simple web test of library information system. And I'm going to do a web test. We do support desktop apps. We do mobile. We do manual only if you want to use it to record a manual script. And actually, that's a good point because we do have a tool or a part of Rapiz where it can create a manual script and describe the test for you. And it's very similar to what HP calls Sprinter. So if you are using Sprinter with ALM and you really want that functionality, don't worry. Rapiz's manual mode is equivalent to Sprinter. So you get that as well. And actually, another thing we do have that you get free with Spira Team that you won't get with ALM is our Spira Capture tool, which is our exploratory testing browser capture utility. So if you're doing exploratory testing and you want to capture uh, browser events, you know, clicking through doing an exploratory session, and you want to know what you did you know, 10 minutes ago, use Spira Capture, and it works with Spira Team, but it can also save standalone files as well. So let's go ahead and create web. Hit Firefox. There we go. Hit OK. I'm going to use the visual language. As I mentioned, we recommend that Rupees as a visual uh, scriptless first language. You can always use JavaScript even with an RVL script. And so this is my script right here. Close that. Uh, it's a, basically a table based on it looks like an Excel sheet. It's actually a table of all my actions. And so if I was to now record a simple script, which I will do, so it's like a keyword driven test effectively. I'm going to now build that. Now, 
Repeats can do a variety of different modes. I'm going to show you, first of all, a recording, which is a record and play kind of action. And record and play, as you know, has had a bad name in the industry because it tended to create scripts that look good to the bosses but didn't work very well in practice and were unmaintainable. Um, Repeats, because of its AI engine, records scripts that actually are maintainable. It generally creates XPath that is going to be reliable on repeated recording and playback. However, it also has intelligence where it can actually do partial matching and uh, automatically adapt. And it also has tools to let you as the engineer, the automation engineer, um, you know, design scripts for you. Uh, it also, as well as has a recording mode, it does have the ability to let you learn objects and compose your scripts in the scriptless interface using model-based testing. So there's lots of different modes it works in, depending on your experience of automation, um, the sophistication of what you're doing, and also the script. Is it a one-time throwaway RPA script where you really want to record and play pretty much out of the box, or is it something where you're going to be maintaining this over a long period of time and you want to use repeats to build a framework that's going to be much more maintainable over the long period? So there's lots of different approaches that we have built into the tool, and we can help you, you know, decide you know, how best to compose your scripts. And on, if you go to our GitHub channel, we do have large numbers of frameworks out of the box for different platforms. Like we have a, an SAP framework, Dynamics 365 framework, Dynamics AX framework, Salesforce Classic framework, Salesforce Lightning framework. So these frameworks are out of the box frameworks that we give you with the tool. Anyway, that's enough talking. Let's see what it's been doing. I was recording my login. As you can see, I did click on the, the div uh, outside of what I wanted to do because of the uh, password manager popped up. So whenever you get something in the recording that's undesirable, you can just go here and say delete. Um, I've just, at this point, I've just logged in. So I want to actually log in and verify that I logged in correctly. That's a good thing to do. So I'm going to use the verify button to verify uh, the librarian. Let's do that. Librarian. Not, not bitmap, I want to verify the text. There we go. Bitmap will be useful if it's a graphic. And then I want to go in, create a book. Again, I'm going to do just a very simple script today because we only have a limited time. If you're interested in automation, my colleagues, Dennis and Alexi, are doing some webinars which go into this in a lot more detail for different applications and some really complex applications like Microsoft Dynamics, which are, um, from an automation standpoint, pretty complicated. They've got lots of iframes and dynamic elements and login pages and hybrid frameworks. And I mean, yeah, they, they are real challenges for automation. So uh, if, you, if you really want to get deep on the automation side, definitely go to one of the webinars. Um, so we've located that book. We want to verify it. So let's go ahead and verify Adam's book, which is control and one. It's going to pop up. There we go. Fine, and I'm going to log out, hit finish. So that's record and play, recorded it. And to the end, there's my script. And if we did record, I guess we should do a play. So let's go ahead and play it. And um, before I play it, a couple of things that are useful to know. Uh, and when we migrate things across from UFT, we are able to migrate across the object repository. So this is my object repository. These are all the objects I interacted with. And you can drag and drop those into the grid. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, but this is what we would migrate across from, from um, UFT. These are the actions. We can migrate this across from VBA into the JavaScript version of this, uh, which you'll see in a bit. And we can also migrate across any of the data. So if I was going to have a test data file, which I can show you, um, that will also get migrated across. But before we do any of that, the proof of the pudding is in the playing. So let's save my test, save, and let's just play it. Actually, I'm saving it to Spira first. So I'm saving it back into Spira team. So that way we can play it from Spira team or from Rupees. So let's go ahead and save that. Um, let's go ahead first of all and play it locally. So I'm going to play it once from here. There we go, that's my playback. Uh, there's also options within Rupees to turn on screenshot capture and do some other things as well. But before we uh, do that, I think it would be nice to show you how it looks from Spyro Team since we've been in Spyro Team so much. So if I wanted to play back this same test in Spyro Team, it's very easy. I go into my test cases and you'll see I have a new test in regression tests. It's this one here. And I basically want to um, run that one. So to run it, you do the same thing we do for any test. We go to the test set view, we create a test set. So we'll say automation set for webinar, webinar. And I will schedule that for release one. 
I will choose my machine, which is called TARDIS, because I'm a Doctor Who fan, and I'll save that. And I'm going to basically add some test cases. So I'm just going to add the one test. In real life, you would run a whole bunch of tests, not just a single one. Uh, sorry, regression. And so there we go. Set save. Great. And I just need to go in here and tell it when I want to run it. So I want to run it as soon as possible. So I'll do that. Hit save. So now it's scheduled. That's all I actually have to do. There's another tool I do need. So I'm going to close this. And uh, no, it's fine. And that is, I need to have the launching tool. The launching tool is basically our execution agent. Um, so one thing about Rapiz is it does come with a launching tool called Rapiz Launcher. And Rapiz Launcher is free with the tools, and we don't charge for the launcher. So unlike some other platforms that you may be looking at, uh, you don't actually have to buy a separate execute tool. It's all part of Rapiz. It's no extra cost. So uh, that's my client setup. We're going to pull every two minutes, and I'm going to capture screenshots. So I don't want to wait two minutes, so I'm just going to tell it to check right now. If I did it correctly, it will run. There we go. And I'm going to move it to the foreground so you can see what's going on. And it's going to run my same script that we had a minute ago, but now it's doing it from Spira. So it will look the same. It's going to click through everything. And it's done. So if we go back into Spira, go to refresh, it'll go from gray, not run, to green, meaning in progress. It's still running. We'll say it'll finish from in progress when it's completely done, but the run is already recorded, so we don't have to wait for that. So we'll look at what happened, and you'll see here 30 steps passed, zero failed, and you'll see the screenshots are right here too. So there's your recording. If this is linked to a test, uh, sorry, a requirement, which is actually not, but if it was, it will update the requirement with the status as well. So that's how you'd run a test and launch it from within Spira. So that's very similar to how you would run a, a, a UFT script in many ways from ALM, but now you're doing it from Rapiz to Spira. So very similar concept. And if you want to run a load script using NeoLoad, same thing. We have an engine for NeoLoad, plug it for NeoLoad, and you can schedule it in Spira team. It will run the NeoLoad script and run the result reports back. And if you're interested in seeing that, we have a webinar I did a few months back where I actually showed you how you, you do um, NeoLoad. It was joint with Neotis. It's on our YouTube channel. So again, feel free to go to that webinar and have a look at how uh, the NeoLoad portion works. Um, and my colleague, uh, Henrik from Neotis was on that call. He's a great guy. So lastly, to wrap up before we go into the Q&A, uh, I just want to show you a few other things in repeats which was in addition to the record and play that I showed you, you can also do data-driven testing and you can do uh, other modes other than traditional recording. You can go in here, for example, and I can do record. And instead of recording a scenario, I can just use the um, learn feature to learn objects on the page. So I'll do that. I'll do control and two. I'm just going to learn the three images. So they'll be apparent when they go to the object repository that they're images like that. Three images. Once they're learned, they now appear in repeats. In the object tree, you click Reflector, Repeat Spire Test right here. If you want to click on an image, you can just go to any of the events and then drag it into your grid. So that's how you write tests. You can just drag any event. That's great. Now, suppose you wanted to do data-driven testing. You can basically use what's called a map to do that. That's a built-in feature. And you basically go in here and create the map. And you can then connect this set of actions with the map. And then you can iterate over the map. I haven't got time to do that right now, but it's uh, in a webinar I've done before. But again, really easy. You just simply fill data in here, and then you can grab these actions, and you can wrap in a, in a, a loop, and then it runs over the map. But let's say you're, a, you're, a, you're an engineer, you want a bit more control, or you like just like code better. You can take anything you've recorded in this visual language and turn it into a code. So let's say I took all this piece up to here, and I copy as JavaScript. I then go into my user functions file, and I write a function called you know, do some do something. And I want to do something with some parameters, so I'll create param1 and param2. And I, I take my existing script, and I do that, maybe add some loops, some conditions, some mathematics, logic, anything you want. But notice, it's completely copied all those steps seamlessly in the JavaScript. And if you are using our conversion from UFT, it will convert your VBA script and your objects from uh, UFT into the same construct. That's great. So you've got if you've got your converted UFT code in the variety of now functions, you then your automation engine, automation uh, analyst that then was like, well, I want to use those functions. How do I use those? I'm not a programmer. Great. You can use anything that's been written in code 
just like you would any of the built-in functionality directly here. So you just go in and you go to action, and instead of choosing an object, you choose functions, and your do something is available. And the parameters are exposed. So whatever parameter you wanted, you know, maybe it was login name, so uh, you know, guest, and password might be change me, whatever it is. Whatever your automation engineer needs for their function to run, you can call it from the scriptless interface. So you can mix script and non-script in the same system. So that's pretty straightforward. And that's how you would use repeats, and that's how it would look when it migrates across. So we're almost up time. So now I'm going to open it up for questions. So let's go to the question section and see what we have. If you have any questions, please feel free to write them in the question box. If not, we are almost at time. Any questions? While we're waiting for questions, I'm just going to also mention that if you are interested in uh, any of the migrations that we talked about, they are available. So if you want to learn more about the UFT migration in particular, that is on our website. Just go to UFT migration, seamless migration, and it goes through exactly how it works. Uh, you can see here it goes in a little bit more detail than my PowerPoint did, but you can see what's converted over, how it converts over. And if you're curious about the ALM migration, uh, the tool looks like this. It's a Windows application that you run, you put in your login, password, hit the authenticate button, you can log in, and you can then migrate over into Spire team. Now you hit the button, and it runs in the background, and migrates everything over. So pretty much uh, plug and play. I don't see any questions unless, I don't think so. So with that, thank you very much for attending today's webinar. Uh, appreciate you uh, coming to learn about the Inflectra suite of products and how you can migrate from um, ALM and from UFT. If you're interested in any other topics on automation, on Agile, DevOps, or QA, please come to Inflectra.com or to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Inflectra Corporation. And I will see you on a future webinar. Thanks so much and have a great rest of the weekend.